The Jack Benny Program. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. <laughs> Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. LSMFT, LSMFT, LSMFT. Sure thing. That's right. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Take the word of the experts. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen present at the auctions can see Lucky Strike consistently select and buy the finer, the lighter, the naturally milder Lucky Strike tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. sold American. From St. Albans Naval Hospital in Long Island, the Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, since we're broadcasting from St. Albans Hospital, which is on Long Island, which is near New York, which is near Brooklyn, I bring you one of them bums, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, I thought that was a very cute introduction, but it so happens that our broadcast isn't coming from Brooklyn. And besides, I happen to be a bum from, I mean, I happen to be a native of Waukegan. <laughs> well, that's right, Jack. You were born in Waukegan, weren't you? Yes, sir. Waukegan, Illinois. What a thriving metropolis. What buildings, what skyscrapers, what- Wait a minute, Jack. The tallest building in Waukegan is only three stories high. Yes, sir. What skyscrapers? What activity? Jack, what... how can a three-story building be a skyscraper? Because Waukegan has a very low sky. <laughs> That's why. Anyway, I love Waukegan. You know, in fact, I didn't leave there till I completed my education. Oh, really, Jack? What college did you go to? I didn't go to college. You know, you don't have to go to college. Well, to find... uh, how long did you go to high school? I didn't go to high school. <laughs> it's not necessary to go to high school. Well, for heaven's sakes, Jack, how long did you go to grammar school? Twelve years. You thought you had me there, didn't you, Bob? <laughs> and I would have gone longer than that, but I was drafted into the Navy. <laughs> the but, Jack, I happen to know that in the last war, they didn't draft men into the Navy. Well, I wasn't exactly drafted, Don. Here's what happened. You see, my father had a clothing store. And he sent me to Great Lakes Naval Training Station to deliver six sailor suits. Uh-huh. But when I got there, an officer asked me to try on one of those sailor suits for size. And what happened? Size didn't show up, and I had to wear it for the next three years. <laughs> now, listen, I, I like being in the Navy. I don't know. It was so... Come in. Mr. Benny. Yes? I'm a nurse stationed here at St. Albans Hospital in the research department. Would you mind opening your mouth and saying, ah? Oh. Not at all. Ah. Uh, uh, wider. Ah. Uh, wider, please. Ah. <laughs> Wait a minute. What are you looking for? A place to hold the USO dance. Goodbye. <laughs> Now, that's the silliest thing I ever... <laughs> Don, Don, what are you laughing at? Oh, boy, did she make a sucker out of you. <laughs> hmm. Don, there's an old, Don, there's an old Chinese proverb that says, when big fat announcer laugh at man who pay him, announcer soon lose pay that keep him big fat. <laughs> Because that nurse was pretty, you didn't have to. Hiya, boys. It's anchors away because Harris is here and he's G-O-K. G-O-K? Yes, G-O-K. G-O-K. G -O 
Oh, pay. What's that? Oh, Harris, you're just like a scow, so pull up your stern and take a bow. Phil. Oh, Harris, you're like oh, a Pacific. Your hair is so weighty and you're so terrific. Phil. Yahoo! Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, hello, Jackson. When did you come in? I've been here all the time. And, Phil, what's that new one you pulled on us? What does that mean, G-O-K? Well, that's the title the doctors gave me around here. But G-O-K, what does it mean? I don't know. I gave a pint of blood this morning, and that's what they wrote on the bottle. Oh, oh, well, that probably means the type. But, Phil, I can't understand them accepting your blood. What are you talking about? I gave eight pints of blood already, and they want more. Well, don't feel so proud. They're only using it for back rubs. <laughs> tell you some medical science has certainly made great progress since the last war. You know, we didn't have plasma when I was in the Navy. You're right, Jack. The scientists and doctors have been wonderful. Them nurses ain't bad either. <laughs> You're not kidding, Phil. Those nurses do a great job and they need a lot more of them. Say, Jackson, I meant to ask you, when you were in the Navy, uh, what was your rank? Well, I was a seaman fourth class. <laughs> Yes, sir. Seaman fourth class, what's that? That's an ensign with the air let out of his chest. <laughs> gentlemen, Larry Stevens, our singer. Oh, Larry, come here a minute, will you? Yes, Mr. Benny. Come on in over here. Hey, they like you here, kid. What are you going to sing for the boys? Well, it's called An Irish Lullaby. Oh, yes. My mother used to sing that to me all the time. Go ahead. Stevens and Larry, that was beautiful. Thank you. And the orchestra sounded good, too. Phil, 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 where are you? Here I am, Jackson. I just stepped out for a minute. Are you ready for me to lead Larry's song now? Phil, we just finished the song. No wonder the music sounded better. <laughs> <laughs> who, was, who was that fellow that conducted the orchestra? Hey, buddy, who are you? I'm the janitor here. Oh. oh. <laughs> well, anyway, now we can get out. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Hi, you fellas. Mary, this is the first time you've been so late. Where were you? I was outside talking to a couple of sailors. Well, Mary, I hope you didn't overdo it like the last time we played at a naval base. You talked to a sailor, and in five minutes, his whole face was marked with lipstick. 
Jack, sailors don't refer to those marks as lipstick. They call them campaign ribbons. Mary, campaign ribbons are something you get after a battle. Well, I put up a little fight. <laughs> oh, oh. Say, Jack, how's the show going? Oh, great. And you should have been here. I pulled a wonderful gag before. I said they used Phil's blood for back rubs. <laughs> well, you're a fine one to talk. What do you mean? You donated a pint of blood. They gave it to a soldier. It made him so cheap, he shot a Jap, then ran after him to get the bullet back. <laughs> Well, they don't call me Get the Let Out Benny for nothing. <laughs> I love that. I wouldn't take that gag out for anything. Now, there's a joke I intended to leave in the script. I love it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction this evening, I, Jack Benny, will play a violin solo. My selection... Oh, say, Jackson, I saw you play the fiddle in that picture, uh, Hollywood Canteen. Oh, did you, Phil? I'm going to see it tonight. Oh, no, Jack, not again. Yes, Mary, and you're going with me. But, Jack, we saw it last night for the 12th time. I know, but who can enjoy it under those circumstances? Why? What happened, Jack? Oh, I'd rather not talk about it. Come on, Jackson, tell us about it. Well, I had a day to take Mary to see the picture. It was early in the evening, and I was in my hotel getting ready to go out. In fact, at the moment, I was taking a bath. Oh, boy, there's nothing like a good hot bath. Showers are all right, but if you want to relax, soak in a tub. Hmm, just look at my feet. How'd they get so dirty? I better scrub them. I wonder what it could be. It doesn't seem to... Oh, darn it, I forgot to take my socks off. <laughs> Oh, well, you can't think of everything. Huh? Say, boss, I just finished, it, finished ironing your shirts and your shorts. Good. Gee, this water's nice and warm. Do you want me to get you some socks, or will you wear the ones you have on? <laughs> Don't be silly. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You with that bathing cap on, you look like Charlie's aunt at the seaside. <laughs> What do you wear that thing for, boss? Well, you don't think I want to get my hair wet, do you? No, and you won't unless you splash some water into the top viewer drawer. <laughs> Rochester, stop with that. Now pick up the washcloth and scrub my back. Okay. Ah, that feels good. Keep it up. Say, Rochester, sitting in this water reminds me. Did I ever tell you about the time I was in the Navy and they gave me a medal because I was... Thousands of times, boss, thousands of times. <laughs> oh. But you tell a different other time, so go ahead. <laughs> no, I'll think up a new... I mean, never mind. If you're not interested in hearing about me when I was a sailor, it's okay. I'm sorry, boss. What a sailor I was. I joined the Navy, and it was promotion after promotion. In no time, I was a rear admiral commanding the ship, sailing the seven seas. And I remember one time... Rochester, stop rippling the water. It's making me seasick. <laughs> now, where was I? You were a seasick rear admiral. <laughs> Never mind. Now, get busy and finish washing my back. Okay. You and me, we sweat and strain, working all day and racked with pain. Rochester. Tote that brush, lift that soap. Sometimes I wish I was with Bob Hope. No, every week you want to be with somebody else. Last week you wanted to be with Fibber McGee. <laughs> Love that man. Oh, you like everybody. Now, stand back while I... There's the door. You see who it is, and I'll dress in here. Yes, sir. You want me to get your girdle, boss? Girdle? Rochester, I've asked you not to call it that. Oh, yes. You want me to get your foundation garment, boss? <laughs> no, I won't need it. I'm going to wear my baggy tweed. Now, go. Hurry up and see who's at the door. Yes, sir. Hello, Miss Levinson. Come in. Well, thank you, Rochester. Where's Mr. Benny? He'll be out in a minute. He's getting dressed. Oh. Say, Rochester, you're glad we're in New York, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. Whenever I can, I go up to Harlem 
You know, Miss Livingston, last week I met a girl up there that's the most beautiful thing you've ever saw. Really? Yes, ma'am. She looks like Lena Horne accentuating the positive. <laughs> Must be pretty. Does she work up there? Yeah, she works in a nightclub. She's a cigarette girl. The cigarette girl? Yeah, and she means as much to me as LSMFT. <laughs> oh, Rochester. She came to my table, smiled at me, and I bought every package of Lucky Strike she had. <laughs> you did? Yeah, then I took an option on next year's crop. <laughs> Rochester, I've never heard you talk this way about a girl. Do you think you'll marry her? Well, that'll be discussed with the next meeting of the big three. The big three? Yes, yeah, she, me, and her husband. <laughs> oh, well, if that's the way it is, I don't think that you'll ever have Hello, to... Mary. I'll be ready as soon as I get my hat and coat. Here we are. Where are you going, boss? We're going to see my picture, Hollywood Canteen. But, boss, you were there this afternoon. I don't care. I want to see how I look at night. <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's go. 62 stars, and he calls it his picture. All right, all right, come on, come on. tickets to the box office. And gosh, they're all sailors. Jack, they're not waiting to buy tickets. That's the overflow of the St. Albans pay line. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, here's the theater line. Let's get on the end of it. Okay. Pardon me, mister. Stop your shoving. Stop your shoving. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to get on the ticket line. Okay, okay. Say, mister, have you read what the movie critics said about this picture? Nope. Well, they said, quote, Hollywood Canteen, jammed with a star-studded cast, is one of Hollywood's finest pictures. Among the many entertaining performers are Betty Davis, Eddie Cantor, Barbara Stanley, Jack Carson, Jane Wyman, and Jack Benny, who personally contributes one of the most hilarious bits in the picture by his violin... Eh, uh, shut up! <laughs> what? I don't care what the reviews say. I'm just going in here to get out of the cold. <laughs> How do you like that fresh guy, Mary? He can't even be sociable. I only try to tell him what the critics said. Well, don't take it to heart, Jack, and close your scrapbook. Okay. <laughs> oh, Mary, look, isn't that cute? That little boy is trying to buy a ticket. He can hardly reach the box office window. Oh, Sonny. I'll help you, Sonny. Jack, stop calling him Sonny. That's Mayor LaGuardia. <laughs> Oh, darn it, I always make that mistake. How many, please? Huh? Oh, yes, miss. Were there two passes left here for me? <laughs> I'm, uh, um, I'm the star of this picture. Well, I'll see. Um, I'm sorry, but there are no passes for you, Miss Davis. <laughs> what? Wait a minute. I'm not Betty Davis. I'm Jack Benny. That's who I am, Jack Benny. Jack, she believed you. Stop opening your scrapbook. <laughs> All right. Come on, Jack. Be a sport and buy two tickets. All right. Here you are, miss. Two tickets, please. Yes, sir. Uh, here's your tickets. Here's your change. 
Wait a minute, sister, wait a minute. You charge me evening prices instead of matinee prices. But, Mr. Benny, our prices change at 5 o'clock, and it's 7 o'clock now. So what? I come from California, and it's only 4 o'clock out there. <laughs> Another thing. Jack, Jack, look who's coming down the street. It's Fred Allen in Portland. Gosh, I haven't seen Porty in a long time. Well, I'm not going to stand here and see Fred Allen. Come on, let's go inside. Watch out, Portland. The sidewalks are pretty slippery. Don't worry, Mr. Allen. I've got hold of your arm. Gosh, look what's playing at this. Well, what do you know? Benny's picture. They waited till they put the lights out on Broadway, and then they sneaked it into town. <laughs> Come on. Let's go in and see it, Mr. Allen. Now, Portland, we're not on the radio now, so stop calling me Mr. Allen. We've been eased out of more hotels that way. <laughs> Anyway, who wants to see Benny's picture? I've seen more entertaining pictures tattooed on a sailor's arm. Oh, Fred, you're off the air now. Why do you keep on hating Jack? It's because he's so jealous. Now, you won't believe this, Portland, but when other entertainers become famous, Benny instantly tries to steal their stuff. Really? Of course. You remember when Fitz, uh, Fritz Chrysler became... Uh, I thought there was no R in there. <laughs> Uh, when Fritz, uh, it's another month, I thought it was. When Fritz Chrysler. <laughs> when Fritz Chrysler became famous, I had it mixed up with an old oyster opener, I used to. When Fritz Chrysler became famous, when Chrysler became fair famous, Benny took up the violin. When Sinatra became popular, Benny took a course in malnutrition. <laughs> Do you remember last year when Benny had pneumonia? Yes. He caught it trying to imitate Gypsy Rose Lee. <laughs> Benny's chest is so narrow, pneumonia had to set in sideways. Well, Fred, if Jack tries to remain popular, then at least you've got to admit that he uses his head. Well, of course he uses his head. He's got to have something to separate his neck from his toupee. <laughs> his old toupee. Oh, who knows? Maybe he gives them to Gravel Gertie. <laughs> oh, Fred, you're always picking on Jack. If it isn't his hair, you call him a tightwad. Now, wait a minute. I didn't start that rumor. Even the tightwads call Benny a tightwad. <laughs> Why, I remember one summer when Jack was out on a dude ranch, he kept his money in a wild cat's mouth. <laughs> Frank Buck had to go with him if he wanted to spend anything. <laughs> anyway, Portland, to show you, to show you I'm a sport, I'll take you in to see Benny's picture. Here's the box office. Oh, Miss, Miss. Uh, yes, sir. How uh, many, please? Forgive me for interrupting your nap, Miss, but I, <laughs> I'd like two tickets. Yes, sir. Uh, that's two dollars and forty cents. A dollar twenty a ticket to see Jack Benny's picture. But there are sixty-two stars in the picture, sir. Oh, sixty. That makes Benny cost me two cents. <laughs> Brother, inflation is sure here. Come on. <laughs> the picture's pretty good so far, Jack. Uh huh. You come on near the end of the picture, don't you? Uh-huh. Jack, put out that flashlight and stop reading your scrapbook. Okay, but look at the review I got in the St. Joe Gazette. Ah, they love me in St. Joe. Jack, be quiet. The people who just sat down behind us want to see the picture. And stop bobbing around. Mary, if they don't like uh, the... Pardon me, mister. What do you want, bud? It's kind of hard for me to see the picture. <laughs> Will you please do me a favor and remove your head? <laughs> wise guy. Who do you think you're talking to? Jackie boy, you're losing your temper. Oh, it's you, Alan. 
Why, Jack, you seem surprised to see me. I am surprised. I thought that after you saw your shadow on Friday, you crawled back into your hole. <laughs> Jack, if I didn't have such great respect for old age, I'd punch you right in the nose. Atta boy, hit him, Fred. Listen, Al, if you start anything with me, I'll slug you right back. Atta boy, hit him, Fred. Mary, you're on my side. <laughs> oh, Jack. Jack, look, this is the part of the picture you're in. Quiet, quiet. Everybody shut up. This is the part I came here to see. Madam, will you please make that baby keep quiet? I can't hear the picture. Why don't you keep quiet yourself? I can't hear my baby. What? Atta boy, hit him with the baby, lady. <laughs> Madam, you have no right to bring a baby to the theater. Imagine a man complaining because an itsy bitsy baby cries. Just because it's cold and hot. It's all your fault, Alan. I'm sitting here minding my own business. see my picture. How do you like that? The lights are on and the picture is over. Come on, Mary, let's go. Oh, let's stay and see the newsreel. I'm not in the newsreel. Now, let's get out of here. Ladies and gentlemen, the recently revised program by the OPA for food rationing is again in the spotlight. We all know why rationing is necessary, simply to give each of us a fair share of the items that are short. The needs of our armed forces are steadily growing, and right now more than ever, they must have the things our country can supply. Now here's how you and I can support rationing. Don't buy ration goods without paying ration points in full. Refuse to pay more than ceiling prices. Destroy canceled ration stamps. Don't give them to anybody. Whenever possible, buy low, low point or no point foods. Thank you very much. <laughs> in just a minute, but first, here is my good friend, Effie Boone. At 48, sold American. It takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette, so smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. The finer, the lighter, the naturally milder Lucky Strike tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. The famous tobacco auctioneers heard on tonight's program are Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. And Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. sold American. Basil Risedale speaking for Lucky Strike. L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Thanks, thanks very much, fellas, for inviting us here to the St. Albans Naval Hospital. We enjoy doing our program for you. And next Sunday night, folks, we'll be broadcasting from the Glenview Naval Air Station, Glenview, Illinois. And two weeks from today, we'll be in good old St. Joe. Ah, oh, St. Joe, they love me there. It's not you, it's me. Oh. Good night, folks. <laughs> This is the National Broadcasting Company. Thank mm -hmm. you.